what's up you guys? Welcome back to the Van City Van Life Shop. This morning I painted the front of the frame on the ambulance and I never ran the camera because I was like, well, how exciting of content is this gonna be? So I was hoping to get the whole inside of this painted before Lauren came in to install the engine in, but I just didn't get the chance to. And now that it's all been sprayed, I wish I would have just taken the time and sprayed it. But uh, I got in there as best I could underneath everything. You're not gonna see any of this stuff once it's all put back together. You will from the bottom side a little bit, but I only did this here, just in there and then around the outside edges there and it stopped. So all this stuff looks like garbage and that is nice and shiny black. <laughs> all this stuff will get painted when the time comes. My plan is to actually spray the entire frame system and all the parts that are attached to the frame, including all the front suspension stuff down here, everything on the side, all the coils and the suspension arms, the whole thing will be super shiny by the time all this stuff gets back together. But I'm waiting to paint all of this stuff because I think all of this stuff is getting ripped out. After a big discussion with my mechanic and the guy who did the 4x4 kit on here, I'm redoing a bunch of the suspension work to make this ambulance bigger, putting my front tires forward a little bit more so we can get a bigger tire on there. I still haven't decided on the tire size. The 35s are average, they would fit, but Lauren figures we might even be able to squeeze a 40 inch tire on this thing. That ambo is gonna be jacked up. So I'm gonna wait until that time to paint up the rest of the frame. Because the last thing I want is this thing to be beautiful, all nice colored and painted, and then bleh, all that gross, nasty stuff down below. I wanna make sure when this thing rolls out of the shop for the very first time, that everything looks brand spanking new before we splash through the very first puddle. That very first puddle is gonna break my heart. <laughs> I know when I sit that first puddle, it's gonna be like, hmm, there goes my perfectly shiny engine, my perfect shiny frame and all the suspension parts. But I know that second, third, fourth, and fifth puddle is gonna be downright epic. Okay guys, let's unmask all this stuff. I think we should be good right now. Look at that, to that. <laughs> Man, once all this stuff is painted, it's gonna look mighty awesome. So I think I'm gonna do lime green on the coils and some of the other suspension parts, like on the front over here. I didn't finish off the rest of the bracket here. I'm gonna do all of this stuff once these parts have the chance to be pulled out and repainted then I may do this bar lime green, those shocks lime green, and just to bring some of that engine lime green visible from the outside of the vehicle. Because you just can't have a lime green engine without having a few of it peeking out down below a little bit, like a little green there, a little green there. I didn't want to go too perfect on here because, look at that disgusting line because I know Lauren is shifting some of these brackets ahead. I just wanted to make sure that the inside of that frame was painted. So a lot of this stuff will end up getting sanded down again anyway, and probably resprayed. That turned out pretty darn good. Even when you dig deep in there, my goodness, right down in there, you wouldn't have, you couldn't tell that I didn't spray all that frame section there while the engine was out. Fully protected floor done with a Dynamat sound deadening material, which should hopefully seal this off from ever getting water onto the metal and rusting my floor. 
So now that we've got the sound deadening on there, what a difference. This place sounded like a hollow mess before. Now it sounds like 90% better. We're putting a layer of closed cell foam on there and I hesitate a little bit. I hesitate because the thought of putting foam on a metal floor brings me back to what happened to my van. And if you missed that video the other day, you'll notice that I found more rust on my current van back there on the floor that we just did rust repair in a year ago. But this one here is painted with a proper top coat, a 2K epoxy primer with a 2K top coat. So it's rock solid and that should hold back the water from ever touching the metal. Then we put this rubber butyl stuff over top, which I'm hoping if nothing penetrates past this, then no water should ever be able to touch the floor because I'm hoping it sits on top of the dynamat material here. But throwing this on top, if it was bare metal, I wouldn't do it. But because this is going on top of the butyl, I feel a little bit better about it. So the product that we're using is called Dyna Liner. This product isolates vibrations, reduces noise, which is what this stuff does. So this adds another layer of sound deadening and also blocks the heat. So hopefully it'll make it just a little bit cooler in here because that big motor does put off a ton of heat. And I do notice that the floor of my van currently gets warm right here after a super long drive from all that heat radiating up. Maybe this will keep some of it down. That's what we're throwing down. And supposedly, this does not hold water. That's it, you just roll it out, stick it on and apply it just like you did the other stuff. Hmm, these guys make all sorts of cool products. Dyna Deck, waterproof and water resistant. Replacement for carpet, hmm. Lots of stuff for sound and sound stuff and speaker boxes. Anyway, Dyna Liner. Our Dyna Liner is the most effective automotive thermal insulator available. It is a soft self-adhesive closed cell rubber that resists oil and water. Dyna Liner doesn't promote rust or mildew like most under carpet padding. Oh yeah, I know all about that. It provides acoustic absorption and thermal insulation. So what they said here about uh, it doesn't promote rust or mildew like most carpet under padding. It's that under padding that was underneath my van's factory floor that caused the very first problem. So honestly guys, if you have a camper van right now, pull the flooring up, rip that cotton batting out of there because guaranteed it's wet. And if it's wet, if it's not wet, leave it or take it out. But if it's wet, yank it because that's going to cause rust in the future especially if you don't look at it and i got water underneath my van the other day and oh it was so sad to see that but anyway let's hope that this goes nice and smoothly but we're going to lay this stuff on here today how to use it measure your panel and cut the dyna liner to fit remove paper and stick it on bada boom work evenly from one side applying pressure easy peasy so I've just been putting this in and taking this out, making little cuts at a time, like right along there, belongs up along a trim piece up there until it fits right. And then we're gonna stick the first piece down. It's actually quite nice to work with this one because you can lie it down and then use your Sharpie to draw on the very top of the rubber here and then cut the pieces out afterwards. Makes it really easy to use this product as your actual template. There we go. Scariest part's always laying down the first, the first bit. Oh, I'm scared. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie. Okay, first, first corner down.
Oh, this is satisfying to work with. Pretty slick, man. You just look underneath, carve it out. That needs to be cut a bit wider, and that's it. All this Dynamat stuff has been really straightforward to use. I can't wait to start the engine of this thing and hear what kind of impact all this stuff made because I sure heard it before we put this stuff in. Hooey! For a guy who's been driving a gasoline engine his whole life to go into the 7.3 liter diesel. Boy, that was a that was a noisy shock for sure. Hey, 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 it's looking awesome. Okay, so I accidentally buried one of my seat holes <laughs> on that side, so we gotta go find it. Let's go, baby, let's go. This one here should go in one big long piece, which would be epic. All right, so as long as this works in the back, we're good. Looks about right. this other hole <laughs> just when I found that one I covered this one hey oh I screwed up this little piece here but uh, we're gonna cut another one up there I don't know how I messed it up I just did <laughs> cutting wider than needed that's how I messed up the last one one complete floor <laughs> We're doing the same treatment to the inside of the doors as well. I like this. Oh man. Really happy with how that turned out. And I tidied my shop. All the stuff that was over here piled up is gone. I tidied everything up here and now it's ready for Lauren to come back. So uh, tomorrow, 
I gotta clean up all these parts here because some of this stuff has to go back onto the front clip. <laughs> Look, man, you can see my tabletop. <laughs> it has been a while, my friends, it's been a while. My shop has been a bit of a ruckus. Everything over here are just parts that Lauren needs to work on when he gets here. He's rebuilding the turbo and stuff when he comes back. But once that engine is ready to start, this counter will be cleaned off. All this stuff will be gone off the floor. Those bins will be finished. Oh, something I did today and I didn't film it. I plastic welded. So that's uh, pretty strong. It doesn't look pretty, but it's pretty strong. I used that little plastic welder I got on Amazon. So none of this looks good, but there's no longer a crack there. The crack's been sealed front and back. That was a really long crack. I wasn't worried about how it looks because, well, this is all out of sight. But now, this thing, which was letting in dirty air, which you don't want dirty air to go through this thing, into the engine, you, uh, I fixed it all up. That was a huge chip. This piece was completely gone. Hey, Look at that. <laughs> awesome. I talked to Lauren today and he's coming out here in the next couple of days. Ooh. Ooh, did that ever turn out good? Wow. I painted all that front end stuff. Oh, heck yeah. Look at that mirror finish. You can see the outline of my phone. <laughs> that is amazing. You can see me. Look at it. In my frame! Oh, I can't wait to get the rest of this frame all done properly and, and paint it up because that is not pretty <laughs> whatsoever. But that turned out pretty good. I used an Eastwood 2K epoxy primer. So you take that little pin out there, you puncture the bottom, which lets out the hardener. You shake this bad boy up and spray it, and it dries solid. And then as a top coat, I use this 2K chassis black gloss finish. Same thing from the same company, Eastwood. Same thing, take the top out, puncture the bottom, and you have a rock solid automotive 2K finish out of an aerosol can. Pretty cool. That's a wrap at the shop today. We're done. Something I've been thinking about doing though is maybe building a little shelf on the top side up there, like right in that corner, cause it's kind of tucked away over there. Just for some like larger items, like I wouldn't mind putting like, maybe like an eight foot shelf over there that I can stack some of these bins on. Because I have some stuff in these bins that will be rarely accessed or just miscellaneous parts that I'm keeping for the ambulance, just in case I were to need some parts that I took off of it later on down the line. I would love to maybe stick that stuff in a box over there just to free up some of my space over here for actual projects that I'm working on currently. Anyway, we out.